We have made this video to cover some tips and tricks that might benefit a new Bennett's Wallaby Rehabilitator. These wallabies are mainly located in the eastern section of Australia. If you consider the recent massive bushfires in this region and combine it with the number of shootings and roadkill, together with the knowledge that it can take up to two years for a joey to develop to maturity, you will understand that what you are doing is a very important step towards ensuring the preservation of this beautiful native animal. The process will be at large cost to your time, sleep, freedom and wallet, so be prepared for the long haul. These macropods are shy and hypervigilant. A relaxed upbringing can limit stress-related disease. A joey will quickly become in tune with your emotions, so if you are a stressed person, you will probably have a stressed joey. Independence timing is imperative. As joey starts to become independent, you will need to step back and eventually teach avoidance of things like cars. After leaving the pouch entirely, a young wallaby can still be reliant for around nine months. This video covers the wallaby's life between around 140 and 330 days, or 5 to 12 months. We are assuming that your <coughs> joey has been vet checked. We try to earn the joey's trust in the first few days of arrival. Resist the urge to showcase your new orphan, it will only add stress. Give it plenty of quiet time to rest and recover from its ordeal. We use a dark and warm carrier. Joey will hiss when cold, hungry, frightened or needing a cuddle. As Joey develops and starts to leave the pouch, you can slowly step back. As with most other wildlife, if you don't spoil it, Joey will grow to become more independent and finally not want to know you. You will now be feeding Joey every four and a half hours or five times per day. You will have grass complete with dirt and roots, a little of dried gum leaves and bark available for Joey to nibble at. Don't feed clover at this stage. Joey should be exposed to indirect sunlight daily. Under a tree is best to get vitamin D intake. If Joey is confident to leave the pouch for a very short period, it will need to be strictly supervised. It can get cold quite quickly and at this stage should be kept at around 30 degrees Celsius, but it is good to encourage movement when it feels ready. Pouch bound Joeys can develop physical and emotional problems. We lay our pouches outside at this stage on a thick blanket to stop the rising damp. We believe that this is natural as mothers usually lay down during the day. Joey will stick out its head and look around. Joey will eventually become curious about the world and slowly move out of the pouch. But don't allow this until Joey is comfortable with you and its pouch home. Or you could both end up stressed if Joey has the mindset to run for the hills. You will now be feeding Joey every six hours, four times a day. And Joey will have access to various grasses with roots and dirt attached. Joey's feces will be darker and more defined. This period is crucial for Joey's body to learn to regulate temperature. Joey will need more space to move for the muscles to develop properly. Joey should be out of the pouch for an hour or so, twice per day, but should still be supervised. Heat is no longer necessary during the day, but is still required at night at around 28 degrees. Check the body thoroughly for ticks. With a new arrival, we may leave a tick on a joey for some hours, as we understand that it helps joey to develop an immunity, but we don't leave on more than one. The most common spots for ticks are the tip of the tail, inside the ears, and between the toes. Use a tick remover if you have one. You may need magnified vision. You must remove the entire tick, head, legs, and all. If you're not confident, seek help. It's a horrible infection of the tooth root with serious consequences. Some of the best ways to avoid lumpy jaw are not to feed soft, squishy foods like bread or soft fruits, and to ensure that the area that Joey lives in and eats in is clean of fecal matter. If Joey is mildly dehydrated, up to 5%, it is more natural to rehydrate Joey orally, as it will naturally be absorbed by the gut. But if Joey can't drink, has stomach issues, or is severely dehydrated, then you will need to have a look at other options. Check with the vet first whether Joey has already been hydrated and the quantities. 
Test hydration by tenting the skin between the shoulders. Mild dehydration will show a two to three second return of the folded skin. You should also check Joey's ears and feet to see if they are cold. For treatment of mild dehydration, lactate or vitrate are readily available at feed stores or vets. Give this by bottle to a warm Joey at body temperature. We hydrate every five hours for the first three days at around 10% of the animal's body weight on day one followed by 7% to 8% on day two and three. If liquid starts to appear in Joey's nostrils, you've given it too much. This can happen through different causes, common reasons being hypothermia, which slows down Joey's swallowing rate, or by Joey sucking too much formula too quickly. Always ensure the milk flow is low. A mother's teat flows very slowly, and so should the artificial teat. Too much too soon can have tragic consequences, so never rush your bottle feeding and always check the whole size of the teat. The milk should trickle, not pour. On the other hand, you don't want Joey to become exhausted by having to suckle too hard. As a general guide, one millimeter hole per one kilo Joey has worked for us. You can monitor some signs for aspiration. If Joey is sluggish, check for hypothermia and warm Joey before feeding formula at body temperature. If you notice milk in the nostrils, stop bottle feeding immediately and seek veterinary assistance. Joey will require antibiotics in the best instance and oxygen therapy with aggressive treatment in the worst case. Sometimes you can do your best and Joey can still aspirate. In this case, consider encouraging Joey to lap the formula in future rather than feed from a bottle.